Welcome to St. Faustina Parish. Today is Saturday, March 26th, and this is the Vigil Mass for the fourth Sunday of Lent. Good evening. Welcome to St. Faustina Parish. Please stand. Today's Mass is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our opening hymn is the Entrance Antiphon, found on page 91. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome home on this wild weather day. It's incredible out there. Anyway, give it a week. It's April Fool's Day, so it all works out. But it's amazing how time is flying by and Lent is upon us as we come to the middle of Lent to celebrate Latari Sunday, a time of rejoicing, a time of peace, of fellowship, and of joy. And as we come off of the solemnity of the Annunciation this past Friday and the consecration of Russia by our Holy Father and by the bishops of the world, we do so recognizing a different era within the world, a time when the world gathered in prayer a peaceful moment that could possibly change the way that we look at each other. But it starts in each and every human heart. It starts in our hearts as we recognize our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to the father, Father, give me my share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all of his belongings, all of his belongings, and sought off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck the country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods in which the swine fed, but no one gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here I am, dying from hunger. Shall I get up and go to my father? And shall I say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still long, a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then he let us celebrate with a feast, because his, his son of mine was dead, and he has come to life again. He was lost 
and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked, what this might mean? The servant said to him, your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fat fattened calf because he had him back safe and sound. He became angry and went and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did you did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul's letter talks about we have been entrusted with a ministry of reconciliation. And that ministry of reconciliation is a beautiful gift that we've celebrated this past Friday as we prayed for peace being restored not only within Ukraine and Russia and in that entire area, but peace to be restored throughout the entire world and each and every human heart. But our message of reconciliation, our struggle to reconcile with each other and with God, also is a personal struggle and a local struggle, not only an international struggle. It's not only for the major world powers, but it takes place in each and every human heart. And I'll give you this, it's a lot harder now than it was before. In our world today, being an ambassador, being a messenger of reconciliation is very, very difficult. I remember growing up, and as I was growing, because it's not that long ago. But anyway, so I remember growing up, and as I was growing up, one of the things that would happen is that if you did something that was, um, let's just say stupid, uh, and as you did it, what would happen is, is that somebody naturally would look at you and say, oh, um, you need to go to confession. Nowadays, they look at you and say, oh, um, I'm gonna post that on Facebook. You know, it's like, it's one of those things where back in the, I mean, we were talking about this with friends of mine. Back in the day, if you messed up, nobody knew about it except for the people around you. And you prayed to God that your parents didn't find out. But eventually they did. But it, what happened is, is that there was a time when people would just forget about it, would move on. There were times when we would get into arguments or disagreements. And in those arguments or disagreements, you would reconcile, not only within your own heart, but with your other family members and with varieties of people. And as that reconciliation would take place, you would move on. Sometimes you would drift further away, but that forgiveness would be present within your life and in your heart. But every once in a while, true reconciliation would take place, not just forgiveness, where a person says, I'm sorry, Another person says you're forgiven, and they grow stronger. I know within my friendships, the ones that are really close to me, those are the ones that we've not always agreed on things. We've fought and we butted heads. And at the end of the day, when we reconciled with each other, that friendship, that relationship became stronger. But nowadays, within social media and with all the other things that are out there, if I do something that's stupid or sinful, it gets posted online, God forbid, and then as it gets posted online, everybody jumps on it. There was one time I was with someone, and they po somebody posted something that was it's too good. And as they were posting it, the person took a screenshot of it because they knew that that person would realize that they shouldn't have posted that, and they, did, they wanted to hold on to it just in case they took it down. 
And I looked at the person, I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you hold this over somebody? And I'm like, because it's funny, Father. I'm like, it's not funny. It's not funny. If you think a friend should take that down, you should call them up and say, please take that down. Don't take a picture of it. That movement is where we're at in our world today. I'm going to hold this over you. Or I'm going to find other thousands of people who agree with me and dislike you. I'm going to create a gossip area where people are going to start talking and talking behind your back. And we're not going to talk to you about it, but we're just going to do private messenger and nobody will know. And it'll be okay. And it's not. It's not. It's a sin. And in that sinfulness, we don't become ambassadors of reconciliation. We become like the older brother who hears that a person has experienced conversion of heart, that that younger brother is dead and is now alive again, and comes home and comes to the sacrament of reconciliation, comes to that place where they feel comfortable in their lives and saying, you know what? That's not me. And it may have happened 10 years ago, it may have happened 10 minutes ago, but I know that that's not me. And in that moment, I turn to the Father, I return to the right relationship, I come to my senses, and I realize I need forgiveness. But I don't need to be persecuted. But that's what the older brother did. And think about the reaction. Right now, the reaction is between the father and the older brother we hear at the end of the story. But think about the younger brother. Remember, they didn't have windows, they had doors, but it was mostly open air. And in that open air, it was quite the party. The older brother heard about it from a distance. The younger brother's sitting there, he's just amazed by the father's love, by the father's mercy, by the father's forgiveness. He's just blown away by that. He has comfortable clothes on finally. He has rings on his fingers and shoes on his feet. There's food before him that he didn't have before. And he's looking at all of this and he goes, I am just absolutely blown away by the Father's love. But then he looks around and he starts to realize that not everybody is there. And as he's looking around, all of a sudden the servant comes in and whispers to the Father, now, did he overhear it over all that stuff? Our imaginations can travel because of the way that a parable is set. But he might have heard, brother, he might have heard outside. And then all of a sudden, the father excuses himself from the festivities and walks outside. Well, needless to say, the younger brother's probably going to be curious. He walks over, he looks outside, and he sees this confrontation. And as he sees this confrontation, his older brother is hollering at his father. And all of a sudden, maybe catches sight of him out of the corner of his eye. And all of a sudden, the words come out. Look, this son of yours, he swallowed up your property with a life with prostitutes. And I have been with you all this time. I'm the perfect one. I'm the one who got it all right. I'm the one who sweat and teared and did everything I was supposed to. And now he's in there celebrating, and I didn't even ask for a goat for my friends. Who do you think you are? And in that moment, for that younger son, all of a sudden, that clothes doesn't quite feel comfortable much. Those rings feel a little big. Those shoes a little tight. The younger son's stomach starts to quiver a little bit. It's kind of really good food, but I'm not used to it. And then all of a sudden, the devil comes back and says, you know, he's right. You're not a good person. You're this, you're that, you're the other thing. You swallowed a life filled with dissipation and prostitutes. And who do you think you are coming back here? Do you think you're really worthy of love? And what do we hear from the Father? The exact same words. The exact same words. He went to the younger brother. you got to rejoice. The Son of mine is dead and has come to life again. He's lost and has been found. I love him like I love you. And I can't not, not love him. Because he's my son. 
And that's the word of God in our lives. Where the world will tear us apart and shred us and move us apart from each other and blame everybody and anybody under the sun. God is calling us to relationship with him, to relationship with each other. And as we look at those moments in our lives, do we call people back in reconciliation as ambassadors, as messengers, and say to them, you're not damned to hell. You just need to go to confession. You're not a bad person. You just made a bad decision. You know what? You're not a jerk. And you're not this or you're not that. No matter what the devil tells you. You're a child of God. You're my brother. You're my sister. And we want you to come home. We want you to be with us. To celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. To receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. To celebrate at the greatest banquet of heaven. You were just lost. And now you're found. You died a little bit. But Christ is here to resurrect you. And raise you to new life. So much does God love you. That powerful message of reconciliation breaks through the cacophony of sounds that deter us and tear us apart. Let us be ambassadors, messengers of that love of God. For as we share that love, we have also received it. I believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit he was accorded to the Virgin Mary, and we became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. And he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in God's divine providence, we turn to our loving Father in our need. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may the Lord continue to help her be assigned to the whole world of his mercy and goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, may God's peace and spirit of understanding prevail in their communications with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the Russian and Ukrainian people in this time of conflict, may God's grace sustain and strengthen them, and may their leadership come to a diplomatic resolution. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel abandoned by God, may the Lord love and mercy make his presence known in their lives.
to call them home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in the faith community who teach the faith, may the Lord bless their services and commitment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who are preparing to receive the Easter sacraments, may they be guided by the truth of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the love of God may inspire others to recognize the dignity of all people from conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers received by our minister, parish's ministry of prayer, and those whose voices in silence of our hearts, may they be answered according to God's divine providence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially for Jonathan Stagura, who passed away this past week, and for Stella Wall, our Mass intention, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, you have called us together as a family of faith, hope, and love. Continue to inspire us to be ambassadors of your mercy and reconciliation as we go forth filled with the glory of God. For we ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are presented and prepared at the altar, we will sing Amazing Grace, number 446, 446.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure. So that for eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Amen. 
history of faith. Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall.
You must rejoice, my son, for your brother was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is found. As we come forth to receive the Holy Eucharist, we will sing, Open My Eyes, number 404.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements as we continue with our Lenten journey, just a reminder that we do offer confessions on Monday evenings, starting at 5.30, along with adoration in our chapel, so please come and join us. Um, we've had a, a good steady stream of people. People have been asking whether or not we're going to be having a penance service. Um, we're going to have a meeting this coming Thursday with the liturgy committee to talk a little bit about that. If we do have one coming up, it will be in the bulletin. But if not, just remind you that that Monday nights at all the parishes of, the, of uh, the area is available. So again, Monday nights starting at 5.30. Um, also, uh, we have Stations of the Cross at noon and at 6 o'clock on Fridays, along with Pizza and Prayer or uh, soup, uh, soup and Scripture immediately after. The grow, uh, people keep on coming, and which is a great conversation to be had immediately after Stations of the Cross on Fridays. So please, if you can, join us for those as well. Um, the information concerning the Easter uh, program and the times will be coming out shortly, so please keep an eye on the bulletin or in your mail for those in that information. Uh, we'll be sending that out uh, relatively soon. And then also just a reminder that immediately after Mass today, um, throughout the entire weekend, we're having those Senate listening sessions uh, where we just talk, sit down and talk about the faith, and that information will be passed up to the diocese, which would then be passed up to the Holy Father um, for the Senate on Synodality. Uh, which is coming up in the next few years. So that's immediately after Mass today, downstairs uh, in the basement of the church, um, for those who wish to join us. We have some goodies and some coffee for those who'd like to join us for that as well. So again, please come downstairs and uh, sit down and talk a little bit about the faith as we share that understanding. Just a reminder that immediately after Mass today, we also will uh, kneel down as a community and pray for a continued peace uh, within our world, and then the deacon and I will process out, and we'd ask that you follow us after that period of time. So again, immediately after Mass today, we'll all kneel together as a family, praying for that peace in our world, prayer of St. Michael, prayer to Our Lady, prayer of thanksgiving in our hearts as we turn to the Lord in beautiful ways. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Lord, look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life to your, by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace, loving God and one another. Thanks be to God.